In the case one, product and offer configuration. In OSS, we are going to manage the resource, and we are going to um, use this resource to explore, expose the network functionalities and network cap capabilities to provide services to the customer. So in OSS, we are going to define the resource specification, resource model, resource template, and then we are going to define the RFS, resource facing service, and the CFS, customer facing service. And then we are going to define the product. The OSS defined product will be synchronized to BSS so that the product could be, could be um, used to make up bundles and to sell to customers. So in the resource specification, we manage devices, connections, VNF, and the sites, and etc. etc. The resource model and the resource template. So this is the um, management of uh, the vendor and the vendor models, and use an easy way to maintenance the devices. So in the RFS, let's say for for example the IPCG, for example, we're going to have an IPCG connection, and uh, which is uh, uh, depending on the power nexus. So um, we're going to define the IPCG relevant RFS, and we're going to define the relevant CFS, which means the IPCG site and IPCG access, which could be the power nexus, and. Um, then we can define the product. So the main product is IPCG. This IPCG product includes two customer facing services. One is the IPCG site and another is the point access. So when the OSS accepts the service request from BSS, um, the, 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 the service request could, will contain multiple uh, products and OSS will decompose the products into CFS. Say the IPCG will be decom decomposed into IPCG site and the point access. And then decompose the CFS into RFS to allocate resource to the uh, to support the customer service. So come to the system. So we have the product specification. We have the CFS customer facing service specification and the RFS resource facing service specification. So in the product, let's say the IPCG here we are using the L3 VP, uh, VPN access. So this is the product and this product code we are be synchronized to CRM. So CRM when CRM sends the the product uh, P uh, dash L3 VPN dash AC, then the OSS will map with this product. So the the attributes which are used to define some of the features of this product, like the rate, uh, the uplink rate, the VPN domain, the COS, the downlink rate and the connection row, etc. the CP model. And then we can see the, the CFS members. So this is a product, and this is a CFS customer facing service. So the L3 VPN access includes the PAN access service and the L3 VPN end user connection service. Then the, um, here we can see in the in definition of in the definition of the relationship between CFS and the product, we could config the attribute mapping. So we have we also have attributes for CFS, and we need to map with the attributes uh, the, the 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 attributes which came in from the product, so that we can have the values for the CFS attributes. Here in the CFS. Also in the L3 VPN end user connection, we can see the attributes and we can see the CFS we are going to define its relevant RFS resource facing service. Let's say for the L3 VPN end user connection, we are going to need uh, the management IP. We're going to assign a CE, an IP1 and the end user IP connection. And uh, then in the RFS, we are going to define which 
resource are used to support this RFS. Let's take the CE as an example. So we can see that the CE RFS, we're going to use a router to support this RFS. So that means when we have decomposed the CFS into RFS, and we're going to have a resource allocation task, and this task we're going to distribute, we're going to allocate the uh, router to support the L3 VPN access. And uh, in the product, we can see the overall view. So from the you can see the from the CFS we can drill down to see the RFS and from the RFS we can drill down to see the resource. Let's say the point access we need to allocate a network terminal and uh, this could be an ONU. Also the L3 VPN end user connection, the CE, it could be the router and uh, the IP bound. We're going to allocate IP address. Management IP also, we're going to allocate IP address, different kinds of IP address. Here it will be defined. So this is from product to CFS, to RFS, and then to resource. To resource. Let's say the end use IP connection, we're going to allocate the end use IP connection as well as the Adnet VLAN segment. So, product, CFS, RFS, and the relevant resource. So the the relevant resource will be allocated during the resource allocation um, status in the CFS workflow. And also we can see the relationship between the uh, products or between the CFSs or between RFSs. So let's say for the product, the L3 VPN access, it's having the relationship with L3 VPN domain. It depends on an L3 VPN domain. So we need to have an L3 VPN domain first, then we can create different uh, VPN accesses. And these accesses, they belong to this domain. And also, that could be some products depending on the uh, L3 VPN access. We can define some, we can define some sub products, or we can say related products. Related products could be related with the main products. Also, in the CFS, we can see the relationship. Um, L3 VPN access, and it has the relationship. It's depending on the L3 VPN domain. Also, it's depending on the point access service. So when we have a customer facing service, there are three end user connection. It will generate the point access service as the physical barrier to support this L3 VPN end user connection. So this is for case one, the, the product configuration. So we define product specification, we define the CFS specification, we define the RFS specification, and from bottom to top, we use the, re we use the resource we manage in the inventory system, and we um, expose their capabilities to make up the RFS such as we expose the, the functionality or the capability of the router to support or to make up the, the resource facing service, the CE. And then we use the RFS. We use the RFS to compose the customer facing service. And we use customer facing service to make up the product. So this is the logic.